Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. Here's John and Heidi. Thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Wednesday. Hey, baby, how you doing? I'm great. How are you? Oh, fantastic. Coming up in a little bit, we're going to be visiting with a young man by the name of Bill Heinrichs. And uh, we've got a, a, I think his book is called Clarity, I believe, if I remember correctly. We're going to get all the details coming up here in a little bit as we chat with him. Take a listen to this. A doctor in Austria filed a police complaint when a truck driver threw a cheeseburger at him for driving too slow. Huh. The interest, I don't know, the interesting thing to me is police told him that was not illegal. <laughs> You'd think it'd be illegal to throw littering. anything at a driving, at yeah. someone operating a vehicle. You'd think it would at least be littering or, you know, assault with a deadly cheeseburger or something. <laughs> I don't know. And a new study says garlic might stink at reducing cholesterol. About 200 adults were given the equivalent of an average of a clove of garlic a day, six days a week. For six months, they saw no reduction in their cholesterol level. I didn't know it was supposed to reduce your cholesterol. I didn't know anybody thought that, but I love Uh, garlic. There you go. Coming up, we're going to find out what special things or thing is happening today. That's on the way. Today is a special day, Heidi. Do you know what today is? What is today, John? I thought you'd never ask. Well, uh, we don't have much to celebrate today because today there's one thing on the calendar. You know what it is? Okay. What is it? Camera day. Oh. Yeah. Nothing else. I don't know why. It's Wednesday, June the 29th. You'd think there'd be something going on. You would think. Yeah. But today, uh, on, on the one calendar that I get my stuff from, it says nothing today. Hmm. And I said, oh, there's got to be something. So I went out looking, searching high and low, and I found camera day is today. And, you know, there are probably some people who listen to this program who've never held a camera in their life. Yeah, because they're all on smartphones yeah, and stuff now. Yeah, because back in the day, you actually had to have a separate device for that. And now it's built right into your phone. You still pretty much do. Those camera no. phones suck. No, no. To get good photos, yes, I've they seen, do. No, I actually have seen some amazing photos taken from, like, smartphones. Now, if you have a flip phone, yeah, you're probably not going to get very good Even photos. Even your phone. You've got a smartphone. Your My camera phone's is terrible. terrible. Yeah, well, I, I think I have a setting wrong or something. I have no clue. Mine is awful. It looks like it's from 1960. <laughs> you're like, what happened to that photo? It's very aged. I'm like, yeah, I took that with my phone. <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening on this camera day, Wednesday, the 29th of June. Whether you're an experienced shooter or someone new to self-defense, Front Sight Firearms Training Institute has a course for you. You may recognize Front Sight from their reality TV show filmed at this private range 45 minutes west of Las Vegas. A Diamond Lifetime membership is $15,000, but we have a special price of just $3,000 available now only at radiosavings.com. This lifetime membership allows you to take over 50 courses as often as you'd like at Front Sight Firearms Training Institute. Get this deal right now at radiosavings.com. You know it's true because you heard it on the radio. Uh, in our fast-paced society, we often have a difficult time waiting for things, Heidi. Has that ever happened to you? Have a difficult time waiting for yeah. things? Well, you, it depends you, on what it is. Do you know anybody that's impatient? Uh, yeah, I do. <laughs> I'm a little bit impatient. <laughs> a little, lot of bit impatient. A little bit. Okay, a lot of bit impatient. Uh, Jillian Kennedy of Bristol, England, decided she just couldn't wait any longer for the furniture she ordered. She took matters into her own hands. After being told the dresser she ordered 10 weeks ago was still not in Whoa. and was on back order from Malaysia, uh, Jillian stormed the furniture store. With a screwdriver in hand, she spent Whoa. 30 minutes taking apart the display model of the dresser, <laughs> and she was putting the pieces in her car. Walking out the door, she yelled to the store staff, don't you dare try to stop me. And they didn't. They just they let her go. They're like, well, okay, she paid for it. Uh, we're gonna let her. We're gonna. She's got a screwdriver. <laughs> she's not happy. So yeah, she. It's took, not like she stole it. It was no. something she had paid for. Yeah. And, Ten and weeks ago, she ordered it. It was still on back order, and she had been checking, saying, "Hey, I, I got my clothes sitting on the floor. <laughs> I need this dresser. You know, it's it's really gonna finish off the room nicely, and uh, my clothes are on the floor, so." Either you get my dresser or I'm bringing a screwdriver down to your store and I'm taking the one that's in there. And that's exactly what she I did. think that's fantastic. <laughs> I, I think you would do that. I would do that. <laughs> I, I would absolutely you. do that. I can see you Ten do that. Ten weeks, that's ridiculous. It is. You know, that's a, that's a pretty good amount of time to wait. Now, it doesn't sound like she special ordered anything because she took the floor model. Yeah, they had a floor model. So so why was it back order? Why was it know. taken Fair so long? It's a popular model. Must and that's be. something the store should have offered, honestly. They should have said, I'm sorry, what, it's we'll been just, so long. 
you can take the floor model since we can't get more of them right yeah. now anyway. Why, why we'll do just we want to put yours out? Why do we want to sell more of these and have yeah. other people come in here with exactly. their screwdrivers? <laughs> All I know is you know it's true because you heard it on the radio. John and Heidi. The John and Heidi Show is brought to you in part by the Keystone Treatment Center. This is your brain. And this is your brain on drugs. We share silly stories here on the program, but addiction is no joke. If you or someone you know suffers with an addiction to drugs or alcohol, make today the day you seek help. Call toll-free 844-204-1055. That's a toll-free number. Again, 844-204-1055. And this is your brain on drugs. Some non-humans can even have a drug problem, Heidi. A dog that ran off from its owner in Seattle's Seward Park found and ate some marijuana and got stoned. Yeah, the dog did. Owner Jen Nestor Waddell told KING-TV her 11-year-old black lab mix named Jack was, quote, just stoned. He returned home from the park and his eyes were glossed over. (laughs) He had trouble walking. The vet said Jack swallowed a large amount of dried harvested marijuana. After some medications to induce vomiting and a night of rest, Jack was back to normal. Waddell told police that the drugs and uh, that they joked about that the, I'm sorry, Waddell told police about the drugs and they joked that they could borrow Jack to find them if they paid the fifteen hundred dollar vet bill. So apparently they were joking around. Ho- hopefully the police had a good sense of humor. <laughs> so, <laughs> you can take our dog back to the scene of the crime for fifteen hundred dollar vet bill. All right, kids, that's what happens when your dog's brain is on drugs. Now your moment of duh. And Heidi, this one's actually from a listener. Dear John and Heidi, I can't use my name because my wife would kill me, but I still can't help but share this story with you. My wife called me this morning when she was driving to work, very frustrated. She said, I cannot find my cell phone anywhere. Then I said, aren't you talking on it? She didn't say anything for a good 20 seconds or so. Oh my gosh. Then told me, you're not going to tell anybody about this, are you? (laughs) And he said, nobody except John and Heidi, and they both laughed. She made me promise not to use her name or my name. (laughs) Hope you like this real-life moment of duh. Listen to your show every day, and it makes it fun for us. Oh, my gosh. That's awesome. I've done dumb stuff like that before. (laughs) Yeah. Where are my glasses? On on your head? Where are my glasses? They're on your head. (laughs) I do that all the time. I put my glasses up. On top of my head, and then I'm like, where in the heck did I put those? And they're, they're right on top of my head. Oh, that's awesome. So I'm not going to use your names, but hey, we can relate. <laughs> this has been your moment of duh. The scoop of the day is brought to you by Wells Blue Bunny. If you want delicious ice cream, be sure to look for the Blue Bunny. Sure to have your favorite flavors. Learn more at bluebunny.com. Now, your scoop of the day. Scientists have discovered another galaxy. Yeah, 40 or 4 billion light years from Earth, the hidden dwarf galaxy was discovered by astrophysicists at Sanford Research. How do you find a galaxy? Researchers used a technique called gravitational lensing to discover <laughs> this galaxy. They say the process could help researchers also learn about other hidden parts of the universe. How crazy is that? What did you do today? Well, let's see. I discovered a galaxy. What did you do? <laughs> Not, nothing compared to that, I guess. I just don't know what the point <clears throat> is. Why are we looking out there? Because, and you know what's coming up this weekend? UFO Day. That's this Saturday. And I'm excited for UFO Day. I actually, I'm working on an interview. I'm going to see if I can line up an interview to uh, chat with a, a guy about it. It's, it's, I think it's fascinating. I don't know. Colleges are using a thing called Fit Desk Bikes to help students pedal their way to health. The Fit Desk bike is a stationary bike in an ergonomically friendly laptop station that colleges are embracing for health and academic benefits alike. Clemson University in South Carolina was one of the first to install about 12 of these machine-slash-desk things in their library. Students are invited to use them in the library there. They can sit there and pedal. Officials say that the preliminary data shows that pedaling while studying has a positive effect. They add, we're also seeing that the Fit Desk users seem to be a little happier. Not jump up and down joy, but a little more positive, huh. end quote. I've got a link to that on our Facebook page if you want to see what a fit desk bike looks like. Facebook.com slash John and Heidi Show. Uh, the folks over in China uh, have been duped. And I'm not saying everybody there, but at least some of the people there. Authorities in China have shut down a health clinic in, I don't know if I'm saying it right, Taiyan? 
I probably said it wrong. Here's why they shut him down. They claimed to be selling a Nobel Prize winning device that turns water into an all-curing elixir. Yeah. Patients were sold a $1,000 device for treating <gasps> drinking water. One of the women who had a heart condition said, I felt better after drinking three glasses of water. I'm sure, yeah. A $1,000 device. We were just watching a TV program where they were trying to sell us a frying pan, and I was like, ooh, I want one of those. And then the yeah. next thing was some, what was it called again? The pouch couch. And Heidi was like, ooh, I want one of those. I have wanted one of those. <laughs> Here's my concern. If they, had a, if they had an infomercial for this, we'd probably own one. <laughs> <laughs> No, but I do gullible. I do believe that your health yeah. is 90% mental. mental. Yeah. I mean, I, I believe I that so if you too. feel better, you will feel better. I know. I think so. So anyway, the, a thousand bucks for... <laughs> so you know what? Really? Did they do anything wrong? I mean, yes, if, if, if... They lied to people. That's doing something wrong. <laughs> right. But if it was making people feel better, if they really felt oh. they were feeling better, but they what's said the harm? Was, they said it was a Nobel Prize winning device. I don't think that's well, true. Well, yeah, you can't say that's that. That's wrong. I just think, yeah, they're, they're shysters. Hey, a Norwegian funeral home accidentally sent a letter to a woman telling her of a special discount on a tombstone for her. She was shocked to read of a letter offering her sympathy on her death. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that was a Norwegian funeral home. They're like, oh, sorry about that. That was supposed to go out next week. <laughs> <laughs> a guy in England just ran a 53-mile ultra marathon for charity. Now, running a marathon is nothing special, but he did it for charity. He wanted to raise over $14,000. Here's the thing that's interesting, and here's the reason we're talking about a dude. Well, first of all, 53 miles. Yeah. That's well, it's an, freaking It's crazy. an ultra marathon. I don't even like to drive 53 I know. Miles. And you're like, do I really have to go? Do we need <laughs> Can you just go on your own? Uh, well, this is the reason we're talking about this guy on the other side of the planet. Because, again, he ran this in England. He ran to race $14,000. He ran right. 53 miles dressed as a Viking. Wearing a Viking helmet and the heavy chainmail costume. Where, where was 40, this? In England. 40 pounds is how much the outfit weighed. People are insane. There's not, something wrong with people. I mean, Not what, everybody. Why would just you, him, maybe. It, <laughs> Don't lump everybody into that. Did he get more donations because he was going to be dressed as a Viking? Than he, he was hoping to raise $14,000. I don't know. Maybe raise eight bucks after my <laughs> idea. <laughs> I have no clue. Wow. All right. This has been your Scoop of the Day. John and Heidi. This has been quite an election so far, and we've got a long ways to go. Stay informed at politicalstorm.com. It's a cool site with political news and information on the campaigns, plus a place to chime in and have a say in what you think. If you're into politics, you need to check out politicalstorm.com. Get informed from several different sources all in one place. Listen to podcasts like mine and learn about current election topics, read fun editorials, and engage your brain. It's your country. It's your vote. It's your voice. Politicalstorm.com. That's politicalstorm.com. John and Heidi. Thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi Show. We've got a special guest joining us right now, Bill Heinrich. He is a certified feng shui practitioner, a certified divine purpose coach. And uh, we're going to be talking right now about uh, maybe some advice that can help you with your future about the quarter life crisis. So first of all, welcome to the program, Bill. How are you? I'm great, John. Thank you very much uh, for having me and send you a big aloha. I live in Hawaii. So. Oh, nice. I got to ask, what in the world is a quarter life? I've heard of midlife crisis, but what is a quarter life crisis? Well, I'm a high level business coach. I work with uh, clients from around the world. The biggest thing that I find is that people are unsatisfied in the workplace. And the quarter life crisis is the college graduates, you know, who are now coming out and going to work and going in and finding out that the, the workspace, the field, is a lot different than they had anticipated when they were studying whatever they were studying. Yeah. And they have a tendency to get diverted you know, from their passion. So what I'm doing today, in fact, I wrote just wrote a new book called Clarity Has No Story. When you have clarity, there's no story. It's a, and I'm giving that book away free. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's at www.clarityhasnostory.com. Great for the grads to read, great for parents to read. All of us can use more clarity in our life. And so the crisis is getting out there and finding out that it really isn't what you thought it was, that the 
the education and what we've learned and what's being talked about in school, it looks different when you get out into the workplace. And there are a lot of people who just graduated, whether they just gradu- graduated from high school and are diving right into the workforce, or if they graduated from college and are trying to find that first big job. What kind of advice do you give somebody that's kind of at the beginning of their work life, if you will? The most important thing is to focus on the passion and something that you enjoy. It has to be something that you enjoy. So many of us go into the workplace, and our parents and I have kids that are grown now. We all have these idealized uh, views as parents of what we'd like our children to do. But it's really important for the kids, the, the younger generation, to be pursuing their passion with clarity and intention as to what that is. Everything else will work itself out. Unfortunately, there's a lot more of what I call a survival mindset when they go into the workforce and you end up with that as you're working and if I need to pay the bills, I need to do this, I need to do that, and we just kind of forget about ourselves and our passion. So taking action steps and moving towards your passion are the two best things you can do. And I've actually witnessed that in my own life, uh, people that I've worked with where, you know, I had a, a person that I worked with that was a really, really good uh, fit for the job that he had when I started there, and he did just an awesome job. He was always in a great mood. He was just a fun guy to be around. And they said, man, you're doing so well. We're going to make you a manager. And he, you know, you'd walk in his office, and he had bottles of uh, Pepto-Bismol on the counter, and, you know, all of a sudden he was stressed out. He wasn't happy. And, you know, I was just thinking, how weird is that, that this guy was like the happiest man in the world just two months ago, and then he got a raise, and he got this promotion, and he was miserable. Mm-hmm. And I just thought that was kind of ironic that you'd think, you know, with a raise and a promotion, you'd be happy. You know, that's exactly it. The clients that I work with, and again, I've worked with clients from so many different countries. I do all my work uh, online on Skype, or I meet with them, and these are people that have been in the workforce a long time, and... They just want to be happy. <laughs> I mean, they just literally want to be happy. They're, they're making money. They're successful. But that's not the answer. The answer is how you feel inside. You know, 90% of all people that get released from a job, get fired from a job, get fired because of personality conflict. And again, uh, our guest today has been Bill Heinrich. The book is called Clarity. And the website, make sure you, make sure I get this right, clarityhasnostory.com. Is that correct? That's it. Yeah. Well, you made it real easy. I could even remember it. So that's good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, you know, I hope that not only this, the students who are, uh, have graduated and are looking for work or their, even their parents download it. Everybody can learn something from that book. That's why I wrote it. I kept it simple so that it would really help people. And you made it free, which is pretty darn cool. Thanks for doing that. And it's absolutely free. Yeah. <laughs> Again, Bill Heinrich has been our guest. Bill, thank you so much for chatting with us today. Hey, John, thank you. Thank you to all your listeners. It's been a pleasure speaking with you, and uh, I wish everybody the best in the coming years. Very, very nice. And again, the website is clarityhasnostory.com, and you can go and get a copy of a book absolutely free. Thanks for joining us on The John and Heidi Show. Do you buy lottery tickets? Maybe you wait till the jackpot is big, then you buy one. I was like that too, like my odds get better because the jackpot was more. Well, I think I found something that actually will give me a better chance to win. It's called Lotto-licious. I learned about this from Richard Lustig. He literally wrote the book on how to win the lottery, and he should know. He's a seven-time lottery game grand prize winner. Richard plays and endorses Lotto-licious, and I just signed up too. I'd love it if you join Richard and I. You can play Powerball and Mega Millions without even going to the store. Sign up right now at RadioLottoPool.com. John and Heidi. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? A deltoyologist. A delto- deltoyologist. Deltoyologist is a person who collects postcards. I'm sure I got it right, too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Let's just pretend that first one didn't happen. Seatbelts became mandatory in all cars in the United States on March 1st, 1968. That's how long ago they put those uh, that, that law out there. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? The launching mechanism of a carrier ship that helps planes take off, you know, the thing that helps shoot the planes off like yeah. a slingshot, could throw an average pickup truck over a mile. I oh, want to see that done. That's pretty cool. I think it would be awesome. They should do that and make a video of it because I would watch <laughs> that. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? The quartz crystal in your wristwatch vibrates 32,768 times a second. 
That's a lot. I haven't worn a watch for years. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? The side of a hammer, not the part that you pound, but the side, you know what it's called? Yeah, what's it called? A cheek. That is the cheek of the hammer. There you go. That makes sense. Fun facts for you right there on a Wednesday. Whether you're an experienced shooter or someone new to self-defense, Front Sight Firearms Training Institute has a course for you. You may recognize Front Sight from their reality TV show filmed at this private range 45 minutes west of Las Vegas. A Diamond Lifetime membership is $15,000, but we have a special price of just $3,000 available now only at radiosavings.com. This lifetime membership allows you to take over 50 courses as often as you'd like at Front Sight Firearms Training Institute. Get this deal right now at radiosavings.com. Thank you for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Wednesday. Uh, we've got the top amusement parks that you should visit this summer, according to who sent this out? Probably these amusement parks. I'm guessing. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, somebody sent one out. Uh, Astroland Amusement Park in Brooklyn features the world famous Cyclone. I've heard of that. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, Bush Gardens, Tampa Bay. Uh, there's a African safari experience here too. Cedar Point Amusement Park, Sandusky, Ohio. 68 rides, 16 roller coasters. Disneyland. They have Main Street USA and Pirates of the Caribbean and a whole lot of other stuff. Kennywood Park. Have you ever heard of that? I don't think so. It's an old-fashioned park, but with five major roller coasters now. Uh, Knott's Camp Snoopy, and this is inside the Mall I of America. Heard of that. Now, I th- didn't they change that to? Isn't that the Nickelodeon, Nickelodeon universe now? Yeah. I think that's the Nickelodeon universe now. So it says the largest indoor theme park inside the Mall of America. Yep. And on here it says Knott's Camp Snoopy, but I'm almost positive yeah, that's now the Nickelodeon yeah. universe. So this list is probably old. Uh, we'll, we'll finish, though, because that's what I'm talking about. Now. <laughs> Magic Kingdom in Florida, Adventureland, Frontierland, Fantasyland, and more. Paramount's Cario Winds. This is in Charlotte, North Carolina. The tallest body slide on the East Coast. Uh, Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk, Santa Cruz, California. Old school boardwalk with carousels and rides and whack-a-mole. You ever play that? Yeah. I like whack-a-mole. Uh, ski ball, that's my favorite. I love ski I ball. saw somebody built a gigantic ski ball. For bowling of balls. Bowling balls and five-gallon buckets. And yeah. I'm like, I got to get one of those. <laughs> you break a lot too. of stuff with that. That lo- to me looked dangerous. But. Well, dangerous yet fun. And the last one on the list here of uh, the ri- the amusement parks that you should check out if you're going to be looking for something to do this summer, Six Flags Astro World in Houston says, with the serial thriller, <clears throat> a suspended looping coaster, and Looney Tunes Town. So that's what you'll find there. There you go. A couple of fun places to go. Are you summer. a huge amusement park? Theme no. park person. I used to be till I was told I couldn't ride the rides anymore. <laughs> remember that? Oh yeah, I remember. <laughs> I got on a ride and it, the the lever wouldn't go down. They pointed at me and I'm like, "Hey, fatty, get off the ride." <laughs> it wasn't you though. And it wasn't me, which made it me wasn't. feel good. But he thought it was me, which didn't make <laughs> me feel good. So. <laughs> hey, fatty McFat stuff off the ride. <laughs> okay. Talk about the walk of shame. Yeah. Leaving a ride because you're too I fat for the so thing to bad come down. For you. Yeah. Oh, I did too. I was like, let's just go. <laughs> let's get a corn dog. I need to go get a corn dog and a, <laughs> and a, a caramel apple. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. Hey, this is Tim from Hope and Faith Machine Works. Are you having one of these days? How in the world am I going to do that? Or even, if I could just have this, my life would be so much easier. Well, this kind of stuff is my specialty. At Hope and Faith Machine Works, we work with anyone who needs something built, fabricated, or just done right. We've done medical, industrial, PLC, and prototype designs. You can reach us at yourhopeourfaith.com. That's your hope, our faith.com. You know, we just finished up with Father's Day not too long ago, and I probably should have shared this on Father's Day, but everybody knows being a dad can be demanding, even on TV. Father's Day, TiVo commissioned an independent survey. Now, this was done in 2008, so this was certainly available on Father's Day. Why didn't I read it then? Hmm. The top 25 TV dads of all time. I'm going to just give you the top five. So who do you think number five was? I have no idea. Bill okay, Cosby. Just so, so that's the top dad that you're thinking of, just Bill Cosby? You said one of the top five. Okay. Well, let's go through and, and we'll see if he made the list, all right? I'm thinking Ward Cleaver from Leave it to Beaver made number five. Oh, that's right. He did. <laughs> You've got the list. Oh, that doesn't count then? Howard Cunningham from Happy Days. Really? Yeah, he was number four. Number three, huh. Pa Ingalls from Little House on the Prairie. Uh. Number two, Sheriff Andy Taylor from The Andy Griffith Show. And the top of the list... Cliff Huxtable from The Cosby Show. Yeah. 
Yeah. Now, here's my question. This was in 2008 that they did this. Would he still win today, do you think? It doesn't change his role as a okay. father. I just wonder because, you know, all the stuff going on in, in his world these days, I wonder if they would still vote for him. I'm glad that he made the top of the list in 2008, and, and I'm sad that he's going through what he's going through, and I hope that that stuff's not true, but it probably is. So, <laughs> moving right along. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. Hey, the next time you catch a cold, forget about vitamin C. Don't, don't think about aspirin. Instead, take a good, brisk walk. A study reveals that exercise could help you fight the common cold. That's awesome. Study showed that men and women who walk 45 minutes a day. 45 re- minutes? <laughs> it's a long Are you walk. sure you're right? Isn't it, is it four to five minutes? It's 45 minutes. Wow. Four or five together. <laughs> they showed a study of men and women who walk 45 minutes a day recovered from colds twice as quickly as couch potatoes. Um, it says couch potatoes on here. <laughs> <laughs> we were just talking about that. Somebody was just telling us that somebody referred to them as potatoes. And I was like, that's an insult? I love potatoes. I know. We were both like, I think potatoes are awesome. No, I'm hungry for I don't potatoes. Know why it's an insult to be called a potato. <laughs> they called us potatoes. I'm like, what? <laughs> kids they must need, really like us. Kids need to work on their insults. Is what that <laughs> like, that's the best you got. Leave my tater tot alone, you little jerk. <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Wednesday. This has been quite an election so far, and we've got a long ways to go. Stay informed at politicalstorm.com. It's a cool site with political news and information on the campaigns, plus a place to chime in and have a say in what you think. If you're into politics, you need to check out politicalstorm.com. Get informed from several different sources all in one place. Listen to podcasts like mine and learn about current election topics, read fun editorials, and engage your brain. It's your country. It's your vote. It's your voice. Politicalstorm.com. That's politicalstorm.com. John and Heidi. You know how some people, after they use something, they just can't bear to throw it away? You know, they don't want to get rid of stuff. Uh, yeah, I know somebody <laughs> very well you know, that's like that. I, I'm not like that. If, if I have like a wrapper for something, I'll throw that away. If really? I have empty cans and stuff, I'll throw that away. Really? Because yeah. I found empty cans. You well, and our son and our daughter. If will it's keep like a collectible. Empty can- yeah, like there's some that are collectible, <laughs> collectible. cans. Collectible. Yeah, and you're like, oh, let's get this cool thing on the side. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm going to put that on a shelf somewhere. Anyway, I maybe should not have brought it up this way, but I do have an interesting story that has something to do with this. Uh, property manager Ryan Froker, I think, I'm not sure how you say it, from Ogden, Utah. Uh, he went to a townhouse and he knew something was up. He could not open the front door. Oh. It was blocked from the inside. Guess what was inside this townhouse? What was inside the townhouse? 70,000 beer cans. Whoa. Yeah. The water and the heat were shut off, apparently on purpose, by the tenant, who had evidently drank Coors Light exclusively for eight years while he lived there. Oh, my God! To all outward appearances, the tenant that lived there seemed to be the perfect tenant. He always paid on time. He never complained. He kept a low profile in the neighborhood. The cans were recycled for $800. Holy cow. Yeah. And by the way, to burn through 70,000 beer cans... In eight years, guess how many beers you have to drink in a day? How many? 24. He (gasps) drank a case of beer a day. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. So 70,000 beer cans in eight years. Oh, my God. There you go. Thank you. This could have probably been our brain on drugs story. It wasn't just him. I'm sure he had people Uh, over. You could drink 24 cans of beer in a day. No, I couldn't. If you were were really committed to it. If I was committed. (laughs) But I'm not that committed to anything. Okay. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. This portion of the John and Heidi Show is brought to you by the John and Heidi Show. That sounds kind of funny, but it's true. Go to your local radio station and ask them to start carrying the John and Heidi Show. Here's the best part. They can carry the show for free. They play a couple commercials, but it doesn't cost them anything every month. So if you know a radio station that could use a little bit of help, send them our way. Send them to johnandheidyshow.com. Again, johnandheidyshow.com. We would love to do a radio program in your community. Then you could listen to the podcast and listen to us on the radio. John and Heidi. We always try to wrap things up with good news, and I think this is good news. Take a listen to this story here. It says peanuts and other nuts. First of all, i got to just say this. Over the last decade or so, peanuts have gotten kind of a bum rap, haven't they? They have like the no peanut tables, and uh, they used to give peanuts on airplanes. Now they don't do that anymore. But this is some good news for the peanut lovers out there like myself. Uh, peanuts and other nuts may protect against several major causes of death. Yeah. Mm. 
according to a study that started way back in 1986 involving 120,000 Dutch adults. People who eat at least 10 grams of nuts or peanuts daily have a lower risk or a lower risk of dying from a huge range of serious illnesses, Heidi. I love nuts. The reduction in mortality was strongest for respiratory disease, also for neurodegenerative diseases and diabetes, followed by cancer and cardiovascular disease. Wow. So now, if you are allergic to peanuts, I, I, I'm really sad to hear that because at this right here, they're saying, hey, peanuts can help you live yeah. longer. Uh, but I wonder and they're if... they're delicious. Though, oh, they are. I wonder if there's a way to get around your allergy of peanuts, if there's a way to... Cause it, I know there are people who are allergic to things, and then they'll get like little doses of it, and they'll like break that immunity. What do you call it? There's a word for it, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. I only pretend to be one while I'm reading stories on the radio. Uh, but I think there's something you can do to help with your. Uh, I don't know what it's called. I have no clue. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm a brain dead mule lost in the <laughs> desert. <laughs> what movie is that from? That was from The Change Up. Yeah, we were just talking about that. Uh, that's that's what one man says to another man. He he's married and the other man's not. And he was trying to make decisions. He goes, no 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 no. You're married now. You're brain dead mule lost in the <laughs> desert. <laughs> and I I definitely agree with that. <laughs> anyway, I do have a link to this story. I think it's good news because uh, for so many years the, the peanut has gotten such a bum rap. Uh, it's, it's about time the peanut gets a good story. I, I peanuts just love, can save your I life. Love peanuts, unless of course you're allergic to them, then steer clear of those peanuts. <laughs> All right, time to say goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Wednesday.